Welcome. I'm Carter McNamara, an instructor with the Institute and the presenter in this video. For an internal or external consultant, the contracting phase is usually the first phase that's it's in a systematic plan consulting process. And this phase sets the stage for success in the upcoming phases. So you should prepare very carefully in this one. So in this presentation, you'll learn how to introduce yourself, describe your expertise, your overall goals and assumptions when consulting, how to prefer your work to in a collaborative manner with your client, and what you'll need from your client during the project. We'll show you how to understand your client's perception of the problem, which is often focused on symptoms rather than causes. We'll help you identify who the current client is in the project. And you'll remember that you can change that during the project. It might be a group at one time and an uh, individual the next, but you need to know who is the current client. We'll help you prepare your client for evaluations during and near the end of the project. We'll also share questions that you can ask to learn a lot more about your client and, and their organization. And we'll explain how you can tell if your client is ready to participate in a major project. You'll both decide if, if you want to work together. If you do decide to move forward, then you'll need to formalize an agreement. Internal consultants might formalize an agreement within the organization, and external consultants might formalize a contract or a letter of agreement. The goals for this contracting phase include to establish a good relationship with the client based on openness and trust, and others to understand your client's perception of the problem in the organization. And this perception may change as you learn more about the problem. You want to answer the important question, who is the current client? This is probably your official client now who signed your check, but you need to be sure. You should learn about the client's organization if you're an external consultant or about the client's department if you're an internal consultant. Learn about its culture and how its members prefer to make decisions and solve problems. An important question is, is the client really ready for the demands of the project? That's one of the goals you want to find out about here in the contracting phase. You and your client should complete a formal agreement to the point that you both agree and you're willing to sign something accordingly. The first meeting with the client is the most important, so let's prepare for it very carefully. External consultants should ask if the client has issued a request for proposal. An RFP usually is used when the client is seeking an external consultant. An RFP specifies your client's desired outcomes and other terms and conditions for the project. And an RFP, if available, is important to review before the first meeting. Mention your goals for this meeting. For example, to do introductions, hear about the client's problem, uh, learn more about the organization or the department. Decide whether to proceed and specify next steps. Ask what goals the client has for the next meeting. Have key stakeholders in the meeting as well. When the client's considering major change in a small to medium-sized organization, you might attempt to include the CEO and, and even the board chair. These two stakeholders are often critical to the success of the project, and the sooner they're involved, the better. Agree on how much time you'll have for the meeting. Ask for at least an hour. If your client wants the meeting to be half an hour or shorter, then use your skills in being tactful to express your concern. Ask your client about any culturally specific considerations. For example, you might ask, uh, what should I wear? This question can lead to an invitation to your client to be as frank and honest as possible about what conventions work best with a particular culture of your client's organization. And ask if you can take notes during the meeting. Some clients are reluctant to have consultants take notes during the meetings, especially when the client hasn't even hired them yet. So explain your confidentiality principles to allay any of their concerns. And ask for materials to help you to learn more about your client's organization. In the case of externals or about the department, whether you are an internal or an external consultant, mention to your client that you would like to take a few minutes to explain how you prefer to work. When you do that, it's useful to explain your primary goals as a consultant, which you use to help your client, for example, solve problems for themselves, to work in a highly collaborative fashion, Talk about why these goals are important to you as well. And talk about the primary assumptions from which you prefer to work. Mention that projects are more successful when they're based on accurate information and feedback from members. 
when members have input to plans and decisions, that's good as well. And when members are committed to participating in the project. And talk about your principles and your ethics. Because here is where it's especially useful to provide a document to your client. And rather than recite each principle, just give them a document that they can refer to in their quiet time. Mention examples of information that you keep confidential. For example, problems in the organization and information about personnel. The extent of confidentiality might be more for external consultants. Internals might be required to share more, so they may be more clear about their boundaries before even meeting with the client about what they, for example, say inside the organization. And highlight your expertise and resources that might be useful in the project. You might mention any previous trainings, uh, work experience, or the type of projects that you convey. Uh, it, it conveys your credibility to work with your client in, in the organization and, and with other people there as well. But now's a good time to begin talking about learning and its importance in the project and share what you've learned and how important it is for you to help other people to, to learn as well. Describe the collaborative process that you use and explain why you prefer that collaborative approach, its many benefits and how it ensures long-lasting results and learning. Mention what each of you will bring individually to the project and also what you'll do as a team. Mention any boundaries that you hold in your consulting work. External consultants should mention that you will respect the boundaries specified in the consulting contract, including not to interact with any employees without the client's permission. And mention that you prefer to intentionally build learning into your projects. Explain that that ensures that your clients can solve problems for themselves well into the future. If you are an external consultant, your client might ask about your fees. And you might defer that answer about your question until you've had more time to think carefully about the depth and the breadth of work that we required from you, along with any materials and, that you might need to provide and the cost of those materials as well. It's important to consider what's your client's perception of the problem for now. And here's some guidelines to think about in that meeting. First of all, don't try hard to sell yourself. New consultants often talk too much in an effort to sell themselves. So however clients work to try to get you to give them advice on what they should do or they shouldn't do, be careful about that. Now, clients often hire consultants based on how well the consultant listened and understood the situation. So do a lot of listening now and bring your interpersonal skills. Those skills will be useful now to start building trust, commitment, and collaboration. The more effective your skills are in these areas, the more likely that you and your client will have a firm foundation for a successful project. Listen to your client's perception of the problem. Don't try to solve it. It's important not to give advice, as I mentioned. Even if you are convinced that you know how to solve their problem, you still have not conducted sufficient investigation or discovery to be sure that you clearly understand the situation. If you start solving the problem now, your client is likely to jump at the chance for some quick fixes to their situation. And often those quick fixes are wrong and do not involve your services. Ask questions to learn more about the client's problem. And let your client know that you are listening to their responses. So for example, you might ask, how did you come to realize that you had a problem? What have you tried so far? And what was the result? What will happen if nothing is done? Keep in mind that their conclusions about the problem might be based on symptoms rather than problems. It's important now, too, to get the client's preferences for, for how they want to work in a project. So it's very important for you and the client to agree on the scope of the project. So answers to the following questions can be useful. Ask your client, what will be a successful project? For example, will it be solving the problem uh, not spending more than is budgeted for the project? Could it be achieving some goal or installing a new program or a system? Will it be pleasing external stakeholders? Ask your client if they have any preferred methods for the project. For example, they might prefer that the project include board training, strategic planning, or business planning. For many clients, they have a strong initial preference for further discovery and don't even really want to say any preferences. And that even might be wise on their part. Ask them, when should the project start and when do you think it should stop? 
for external consultants, the start date of a project is usually the date that the formal agreement was signed. The stop date can change though during a project as you and your client work together. What resources does your client have to support the project? They might have allocated certain people, funds, plans. You and your client should discuss how very busy people will even be freed up to take part in a project. And then talk about who should be involved. One of the most precious resources of organizations is their employees' time. Successful projects for major change, in small organizations especially, almost always require the ongoing commitment and the participation of certain people, including the CEO and ideally the board chair. And now is the time to ensure that those important people, those important roles are involved. Let's talk about a real important question that consultants need to answer. Your current client is the most important person or, or group for you to be working with at a certain time because that person has the most influence and the most access to resources that you might need. That client also might be the most important person to determine what success is. So let's consider certain questions you might ask at any given time in a project to help you identify who is the current client. Look around and ask yourself, who's making major decisions? Because this is your first clue to identifying who your current clients might be during the project. If the client answers that a group or team will make decisions, ask how they make them in a timely manner. Do they aim for a consensus and then resort to a vote if necessary? Ask who can make decisions if your client is not available. And this is important because if your client is not available, then you'll need someone else to work with. And the answer to this question also suggests who else might be a current client at different times in the project. Who will be the official contact for the project? A special role might be officially responsible for the project, including coordinating communication, helping to make decisions, and ensuring the project has sufficient resources. Explain that you will be providing written status reports at various times and ask who should be receiving those. Your report should always go to at least two people in the organization and they also should go to whomever will be making decisions about your project and preferably to anyone who will be affected. With whom and how often should you meet? Establish regular meetings with decision makers face to face or over the phone. This is critical to the success of your project. It helps to sustain the political support that's so necessary for successful organizational change. Ideally, the key decision makers will be in those meetings. Let's pause now to capture the learning from what you've heard so far in this video. And in your learning journal for this program, go to the section entitled Reflections from the Readings and Videos and enter the following two questions. They're intended to customize the contents of the video to you and your clients. You might discuss the questions with your peers. The questions are, Considering the types of clients that you serve or want to serve, who should typically be in your first meetings with your clients? Next, in your first meetings, what do you want to emphasize the most about yourself? For example, your expertise, your style, your ethics, and so on. How might you best emphasize that? You can pause the video by clicking on the pause button at the bottom left corner of this video. It's the button with two bars in it. After you've addressed the questions in your journal, then click on the button again to resume the video. We'll talk about how to learn more about your client. Your client might be a little confused as to why you are seeking answers to the following questions, whether you're an internal or an external consultant. But explain it's very important for you to fully understand how your client wants you to work with them. So for example, ask them, to explain to you their leadership style. You could ask them, uh, how do you set direction? How do you ensure that that direction is even being followed? What if it's not being followed? Ask them, who do you admire as leaders? And what is it about them that you admire? What do you want your role in this project to be? Ask the client, how do you like to make decisions and solve problems? Do you like to carefully lay out a variety of options or make more decisions intuitively? Uh, do you prefer to involve others or depend primarily on your own judgment? If it depends, then what does it depend on? What kind of people do you get along with best? Those who are talkative or, or quiet? 
For example, people who are more outgoing and share their thoughts out loud, or people who think a lot on their own and then share their conclusions later on. Do you prefer to get information in spoken or written form? Because obviously the answer to that indicates whether you should share project information in, in reports or verbally. And ask them, do you prefer to call these situations problems or opportunities? Explain how some people prefer that problems are caused, or pe some people believe problems are caused because, well, you, you call them a problem, while others prefer to see situations as an opportunity. And ask your client then, do you have any preference how we even talk about it that way? We'll talk about some more about how you can learn even more. Ask them, what do you know about change management? What would you like to know? Uh, ask them how they've managed change in the past and, and what did they learn from it. There's been an explosion of literature about change management and it's likely that your client has encountered some of it. So offer to share information with them. You could ask them, do you view organizations as structures or processes? And sometimes that's important because some people see organizations from a business perspective while others see them from a people perspective. So your client might not talk about structures and so on. They might talk about feelings and relationships. It's important for you to know about. In learning more about them then, uh, and I just can't make enough about this point because sometimes you can get two people who look at the same situation, same organization and see it completely differently. So, but more questions to ask. Are there any cultural considerations that should be made? If your client views the culture of their organization as being highly unique and as having clear values for how people should interact, then your client already has strong preferences about how you should work with the organization. And you can even say, what else would you like to discuss about our relationship? What question haven't I asked that I should ask? This is the time to really bring to the forefront what are the bottom line situations? What's the bottom line about what we should talk about? Evaluations are an extremely important part of any consulting project. And some clients don't like to talk about evaluation. They see it as a judgment of someone's character. But evaluation is systematically getting information about something in order to make a decision or answer a question about it. So take a few minutes to describe evaluations and, and how they might be done in a project. For example, Describe the, benefic the, the benefits of evaluations. Uh, it might even be that it, you could mention it improves performance of the organization and the people in it. It makes people more realistic in their expectations. That's a big benefit when everyone is expected to do more with less. It increases communications among people involved when they're sharing results and learning. It also increases credibility to stakeholders when they realize that you're using evaluations to make yourself and others more accountable. But the biggest benefit of evaluation is the learning that comes with that. The process of evaluation generates learning for everyone involved because it asks it and it answers many good questions about the problem and, and how it can be solved. Explain when evaluations will be done. They'll be needed when implementing plans intended to solve the client's problem. They'll also be needed at the end of the project to determine whether or not the client's problem was even solved. Sometimes clients are concerned that evaluation means very heavy demands to provide a lot of data. Assure clients that you'll focus evaluations only on the information that's needed and that your priority is to make evaluations as practical as possible. And explain to the client that just like other phases of the consulting process, the client will be involved in the evaluations because that will generate tremendous learning for the client. And it can make the process more efficient and, and even less costly. So we're at a point now where it's important to determine is the client even really ready to take on a major change. And you can learn a great deal about the readiness of your client's organization by asking certain questions. Probably the most obvious is first, have they allocated any funds for the project? For external consultants at this point, the client might ask you for preliminary estimates. 
And it's okay for you to respond that you'll propose fees for the project once you've had more time. You can tactfully ask if funds are available now, though, for the project and if they've been allocated for the project now or is it something that they need to go out and get. Be wary of undertaking a project in which there are no funds now and there is no clear idea about how to get them. You might also ask, what obstacles might you see for this project? For example, they might struggle to get funds or to free up time even to participate. If they see no obstacles at all, then delve deeper because the remaining questions will be especially useful then to you now. Are there any major events coming up that might affect the project? Major events might include an annual meeting, a change in senior leadership, or a move to a new facility. Ask your client how any events might impact the project and be wary of undertaking a project in which the project somehow will just have to be fit in. Is your client open to other perspectives from you regarding the problem? Other perspectives might be about causes of the problem or solutions. Often your client will respond that they are completely open to hearing perspectives other than their own. It is useful to ask who else then should be involved soon and why, and what other perspectives then should we bring into this? Be wary of undertaking projects where your client seems irritated by this question or, or insists that their conclusions are final. What might be their role? in the problem or even maybe causing it. Hopefully your client offers several ways in which they might have been involved in causing the problem or at least had not been effective in solving it in the past. As an external consultant, be wary of undertaking projects where your client seems even irritated by this question or offers little or no information about how they might be involved somehow in its cause. Let's look at some more questions to ask. And these apply to internal and external consultants, unless otherwise specified. But has the client used a consultant before in the past? And if so, how did the project work out? If they have and that project was not successful, then you can learn a lot about how your client might successfully or unsuccessfully work with you. For external consultants, be wary of undertaking projects where your client used many consultants before to solve the same problem and or seems to blame previous consultants for the outcomes of unsuccessful projects. Are there any certain people or specific activities that are just off limits? Depending on the focus of your project, it might be reasonable for your client to insist that certain people not be involved. For example, people who are new to the organization. However, do not be afraid to respectfully challenge your client if they insist that certain resources are off limits. Be wary if your client insists that certain board members or other leaders be off limits. Hiding information can make them distrustful of the project and thereby decrease the chances of success. Are there any people who might be uncomfortable with the project? If any members of the board or other leaders will be uncomfortable, then ask your client how that discomfort should be addressed. Avoiding communication with those people could undermine the project later on. So. Be wary of undertaking a project in which certain leaders are, are to be avoided. How can they be sure that they have the time and the energy to participate? Now is a good time to really focus on this question with your client. One of the most important resources for most organizations is time and energy of employees. And it can be difficult to free up that time to attend to activities other than providing products and services to customers. So be wary again of undertaking projects in which your client does not appear committed to allocating the time and the energy necessary for a project. Do you, the consultant, see any other warning signs? If you're an experienced consultant, you might sense that something about the project is just wrong. For example, do some people in the room appear very reluctant to say anything? Or are there uneasy glances among people? Even if you do not know why you feel uneasy, Recognize that you do. External consultants should be wary of undertaking a project that they did not feel good about. Internals sometimes have no choice, but they can still voice their concerns. Let's pause again to capture the learning from what you've heard so far. And in your learning journal, address the following two questions. Considering the types of clients that you serve or want to serve, what might you typically need from your clients in order to learn even more about their organizations? 
for example, who might you typically interview and what documents might you typically need to review? And next, how will you assess if your client is really ready for a significant project? Again, you can pause and restart the video as needed. So now is the time to visit the question of, do you even want to do the, the project? Uh, these guidelines apply primarily to external consultants, but even internals should still consider these questions to discern how much the project really matches their resources. So do your capabilities match those needed for the project? The primary expertise of a consultant is to guide change in organizations. To do that, you do not need to be an expert in everything. Your skills in change will help you identify what specialties are needed and the order in which they should be applied. But do not exclude yourself from the project just because you do not have expertise in all required specialties. You can recommend that your client bring in that other expert help. Does the client really seem ready for the project? Check your gut feeling. Consider whether they had funds, uh, are they facing any major obstacles and the extent of their openness to other perspectives? What happened when they use a consultant in the past? Are too many people off limits? Are you convinced they have enough time and energy for the project? If your gut says no, then you probably should not say a prompt yes to proceeding. You might be doing your client and yourself a big favor by sharing the reasons why you don't think they're ready. They might hire you in the future because of your authenticity and, and good judgment. Does your schedule match that needed for the project? One of the worst decisions that you can make is to accept a project with the intent of somehow integrating it into your already busy schedule. You'll end up resenting the project and getting burned out and then not being useful to the client or yourself. If you do not have the time required for the project, you can suggest different timing, decline the project, and perhaps refer them to another consultant. Does your nature match that of the leaders in the organization? Even if you do not have the capabilities, or, or you do, there are times when the chemistry is just not right. And the nature of your client is not enough of a match to your own. For example, perhaps your client is very down to business, whereas you prefer more lightheartedness, more human and interaction with others. If you've decided that the project's not for you, then tell your client now. Now's the time to let your client know if you've decided the project is, is not right. Don't waste any more of your client's time or, or yours. Perhaps your client will engage you in conversation about your thoughts and, and your decision. You might end up changing your mind. In any case, your client will respect you for being authentic with them. So let's talk about the formal agreements then that you, you might come to here. Even internal consultants must be sure that their internal clients understand their role in the organization. So a formal agreement between their departments is a clear way to do that. And here are some guidelines to, to think about. Well, first of all, always do some form of written signed agreement with your client. This agreement includes project specifications that you and your client can refer to. If there's confusion about roles and responsibilities, and that can happen when there's many activities underway in a, in a project. Before completing the agreement, present a proposal somehow to the client, whether you're an internal or external consultant. Proposal helps you and your client to think more carefully about the project that you did in your first meeting. It sets the stage for mutual understanding and trust throughout the project. Be sure the client knows the proposal is open to discussion. Too many clients perceive the proposal as somehow being written in stone and that they might use that then to compare you to other consultants when deciding which ones to hire. But other consultants might significantly underbid you because they really didn't understand the scope of the project as well as you did. So discussions about your proposal can help clients to understand those differences. Be sure to mark all those pages as draft and, and date them. Does your client prefer a certain format for the agreement? External consultants should get it reviewed by a lawyer before signing it. And don't incur any expenses until you get the agreement signed. It should be signed again by at least two people from the client's organization. Thank you 
for viewing this video. If you have any questions, please email them to info at consultantsdevelopmentinstitute.org.